Hey guys, you're listening to Winging It With Holly. In this podcast series, I'll be sharing the fun and interesting things I've learned about birds since I started really noticing them five years ago. I'm no expert though, so along the way I'll be picking the brains of my knowledgeable birdie friends, the human ones that is, so we can learn and wing it together. You can see birds anywhere, in a city or the countryside, watching from a balcony or your local park. And I'm hoping these short episodes will help you notice and learn more about our feathered friends, especially if you have never taken the time to get to know them before. In this episode, I chat to my cousin Katie, who works in conservation as a wildlife advisor to the public, about the nesting season, the law around nests, and the hilarious and ridiculous places birds have been discovered building them. <laughs> Sorry. So um, I'm in my local park with my cousin Katie, who is a fountain of knowledge when it comes to wildlife. Um, and as I explained in the intro, that's because you uh, work in sort of wildlife inquiries. Do you want to tell us a little bit about kind of what you do and where you work? Sure. So um, I work in for a nature conservation organisation, um, and I'm a wildlife advisor. So um, anything and everything that comes our way um, via phone call, social media, email, any questions about wildlife from what have I seen to, you know, I found a nest, what do I do? Anything, yeah, anything at all. So the very nature of your work is that you're constantly getting queries um, and all kinds of scenarios coming your way from the public. Yeah, which means you kind of, you've heard it all and you've seen it all. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. (laughs) Um, So the episode today I wanted to talk about nesting because um, we're recording this in March 2022. um, And, you know, my understanding is that this is when, um, well, birds they, they're gonna start getting twitter pated they're gonna start finding their their mate and they're gonna start building their nests um mm. so nesting season i understand is like february to august for the ones for the birds that like so obviously not all birds nest in that season so there are, mm. there are some birds that nest all year round mm-hmm. um so just quickly um what bird what birds do nest so don't pigeons pigeons nest yeah so pigeons collared doves wood pigeons um all decide to nest all year round even through december if there's snow there may well be a pigeon nest somewhere Amazing. they yeah they really go to town um <laughs> do you think that's sensible that they just do it whenever they fancy i mean <laughs> it's it never seems like it okay. but to them it obviously makes sense um so yeah it is a tricky one to especially when people find a nest especially under solar panels um and they're like well when can i you know when can i do work to deter them and we're like well <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a bit of a tricky one because, yeah, they nest all year round. So, yeah, but, yeah, you are right. There is usually kind of a, yeah, a definite period from about kind of March to August um, where that is the peak season. So, um, sorry. No, no, I was just going to say, <laughs> and, for those, and for those kind of birds, we're talking... Um, like a lot of small birds yeah so our garden birds so like great tits blue tits um our wrens finches so green finch gold finch uh, usually the ones that you would see in your garden blackbirds as we've just heard mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> um yeah so they will begin nesting um they've you know they won't not all of them go back to the same nest they used last year so if you knew you had a pair of blackbirds in your garden that used a particular nest it's it's a very good chance they will come back to your garden but maybe make a new one so mm-hmm. yeah there are definitely that is definitely the peak season for mm-hmm. for our garden birds especially cool so in theory then um we could start seeing it at any point from now onwards it, it you know birds starting to build using all kinds of materials um twigs fluff feathers <laughs> yeah. whatever yeah um but what i didn't know when i uh started working in the nature conservation sector five years ago which i found really interesting is that there is a law around um the protection of nests mm-hmm. um which in a way can lead to some very funny situations mm-hmm. uh, but also it's just so important that this law exists because um well in sort of helping these birds you know, well and not decline essentially yeah um so the law <laughs> uh 
which I'm sure you'll go into more detail about, is that literally the, from the very moment a bird starts building that nest, from the, the, the first twig, from the moment the first twig or whatever is laid in place, mm -hmm. that nest is protected by law, which means it cannot be uh, like moved or rem like, yeah, removed, disturbed, um, whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so can you tell us more about that law? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <clears throat> so this law um, is the Wildlife and Countryside Act of 1981. So yeah, absolutely. That is the legislation that protects all wild birds here in the UK. So whether that's a feral pigeon to a golden eagle, all wild birds here are protected. And as you say, it is a really, really important piece of legislation. So yeah, some species are more highly protected so things like barn owls red kites um, they are known as schedule one so that means that even if you disturb them so say you enter um, intentionally a barn um, and you go to a nest site that you know is active and you spook the adults from any dependent chicks um, that is actually illegal so as soon as you see a nest kind of being made just leave it alone it needs to be left alone that schedule one doesn't extend to all our garden birds um, so things like blackbirds um, pigeons for example doves uh, robins they're not protected under schedule one um, however we do always ask that people keep disturbance to a minimum because right. they've got a job to do they're only going to be there for a few months out of the year exactly. um, and it's so key that we can give you know these birds a home like you know the loss of green spaces you know gardens are slowly being you know turned into you know plastic lawns so yeah. any kind of greenery that you have and you know that there is a bird there just yeah just let it let it carry on like i say not going to be there long um and yeah mustn't damage or destroy it at all hands right. off <laughs> yeah um <I> know. <laughs> So we just have to acknowledge the fact that we've been joined by the cutest little robin is watching over us as we record this in the park. It's so cute. Maybe he'll sing for us. <laughs> Go on, give us a sing. It's so funny, it's watching us. It's like, it's just making sure we're, we're recording, right? <laughs> yeah, he wants, he wants to be part of the podcast. Oh, okay. What just happened was Katie <laughs> just held out... Oh, this is another gr amazing... The funniest thing about Katie is that no matter where she goes, she, she, she travels with some bird food for, the, for these very situations. And so she... You just, you that can... robin just landed on her hand and took... <gasps> oh! Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh! Aww. Give us a sing. Give us a sing. Come on. Okay. It is literally... Oh, oh! I bet you could hear its wings. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for joining us, Mr. Robin. Or Mrs. What do you reckon? You can't, you can't actually tell, you know. It's, uh, they look exactly the same. Sometimes there's very, very small <laughs> differences. But, um, yeah. but yeah, they generally look the same. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for that cameo. Um, so... Following on from what you're saying, what this means then, in terms of what we, you know, the general public, um, can do or or not do, essentially, is if you're thinking about doing work on your garden, maybe mm -hmm. removing a hedge mm -hmm. or a tree, um, or and then, but there is a nest in in that hedge or tree. Ultimately, we want people to not not do that, to not mm -hmm. to well, not to do the work in their garden until that nest has sort of done its job. Mm -hmm. I.e., the the chicks that are going to be raised in there have officially fledged and it's no longer in use. Yeah. Um, similarly, uh, building work. Um, mm. If you're planning on doing building work and there is a nest on your roof, it's really important that people respect that 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 nest is there for a reason mm -hmm. and that you don't do that work mm -hmm. um until well same idea so until yeah. until it's gone now that very sort of concept ha it does actually bring about some really funny situations um, yeah. one of the funniest things i've ever heard <laughs> was um so at our work we had someone call in and say that he he went on holiday and he left his window open to his bedroom he came back two weeks later and he found a pigeon nesting in his bed <laughs> now ultimately our advice was <laughs> sorry mate but you've got a new roommate now because you can't <laughs> i mean obviously there are hygiene issues there but in terms of you know ultimately what we're saying is 
that nest is now there. She was raising chicks in that nest and we, you know, he needed to leave it. So I was going to ask you, based on your role and the kind of queries that you've had come in, if you've had any sort of funny instances of people saying, uh, talk, telling you about, you know, places birds have nested which mm. aren't the typical yeah. tree or hedge. Yeah, I mean, guarantee every spring and summer we will have, no doubt, a call about someone who has found a nest in really strange places. Um, one of the most common ones are actually pied wagtails. So this is a bird you often see I'm not going to lie, in a car park. They love to run around um, kind of, for some reason, car parks. You might see them dashing on, you know, even next to the M25. So Wagtails have a really amazing bum wag. Yeah, so obviously they're, yeah. They're, that's their identifier. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Check out that, that twerk that they're yeah, doing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that yeah, they're black and white. They have really long tails, which they... Um, basically yeah twerk up and down <laughs> to um originally it's to disturb any insects which they can then grab but yeah um they do love a car engine i'm not gonna lie <laughs> they also really like wheel rims um so even under wheel arches That's um so obviously these cars must be parked for a really long time yeah yeah so it's people who've parked on their driveway um <laughs> especially last year a lot of people working from home um you know there was definitely a few a few calls then um i've also had a call about um a pine white nesting on a trailer hitch of a tractor so the bit where you have a trailer and the tractor has like the ball on top where you hitch it up and there's a little triangular kind of structure and they nested with is that where it's connect it connects yeah, to the sort it, of so it connects to a trailer right and there's a little like <laughs> oh. obviously it's strong metal so they decided to nest in that trailer hitch and to be fair the guy was absolutely lovely he really didn't want to move it and he was like i've just got to tell my boss that i can't use this tractor that's amazing that's yeah. also a really good excuse not to do any work because you're like i'm really sorry um, a but there's a, a pied wagtail <laughs> nesting yeah. i can't come to work today sorry yeah yeah absolutely um but yeah loads of things pigeons especially will like you say take advantage of an open window and we have had students call up and say we're in a student block there's a pigeon nesting on my fridge um they sent us pictures of this pigeon i mean pigeons they're not the biggest nest builders like three twigs and they're kind of done um so this this pigeon slightly amateur sort of nest so this pigeon was on yeah on top of their fridge they they'd again it was summer so they'd left the um french windows open and she came in and she had an egg she had an egg on on the fridge and i said i'm really sorry but you're gonna have to leave it um (laughs) and they were actually quite they they actually took her took her in quite well that they were really happy uh, to kind of leave her alone um considering like the, the state of student houses yeah, like i mean exactly. having a pigeon in there kind of <laughs> so that speaks volumes doesn't it? yeah yeah but anything from yeah christmas wreaths um a robin was recently oh no that's yeah, amazing it was recently reported to us uh, a very early nester because of the mild mild winter we've had uh had laid a nest and actually eggs as well in a christmas wreath on the front door so um yeah again homeowners like that just have to be really careful and just double check because you never know um things like coat pockets which have been hanging in a shed that's a really common one especially with things like wrens wrens and robins they like little nooks and crannies like that um and also great tits uh, and blue tits will often nest in public ashtrays the ones that attach to the wall that you see in kind of pubs i know what you mean yeah, yeah. so they will guarantee every every year we'll have a few of those um and we just say please please stick a notice on it saying please don't use this ashtray Aww. um and you know they only have one brood a year so as soon as those chicks have left um and people do rightfully worry that the chicks won't make it out but they can climb pretty well they they know what they're doing i kind of feel like you you kind of have to trust the instinct of the mother bird and and the father the well the parents basically if they if they're making the decision if (laughs) this is the best place for them obviously there are some strong arguments over whether a car bonnet a car bonnet something like that is the safest place but if they i guess if they that's where their instinct tells them exactly and it's you know it's those little areas but we wouldn't think of that traffic cones as well that's a really popular one with great tits oh yes Um, yes so there's this amazing picture of um 
uh, yeah, a set of traffic lights. I think the picture was taken in Leicester, Leicestershire. Oh, Leeds. Oh, Leeds. Uh, yeah, Missile Thrush, yes. Yes, uh, Missile Thrush has nested in the sort of the, how do you say it? So where the traffic light, there's like a, the plastic, the black plastic that yeah. is around the actual bulb, the red light bulb itself. I think it was the red one. Mm. And um, I mean, how amazing is that? Literally yeah. just decided, you know what? The best place for this <laughs> nest is in the middle of the road on a, <laughs> on a traffic light, in a traffic system. light yeah. system where, I mean, things like, what, isn't that light bulb going to get really hot and warm? And is, is that really the best place? But I don't know. Arguably, I mean, no predators are going to get to no, that. Up. No. And missile fish, they can, they can nest quite early. Um, and, you know, anything that emits even just that little bit of warmth, actually, you know, it's probably quite, quite good. Um, but yeah, she became a little bit of an internet sensation. <laughs> I remember she was in the news. Um, yeah, it was really sweet. So yeah, wherever you, if you do carry out any kind of garden work, obviously gardening does coincide with the nesting season you know so we always ask just to double check please please double check any hedges anything like ivy um is really really actually crucial to wildlife so if you do have to remove anything from trees ivy even if you're you know entering a shed that hasn't been used in a while you notice a nest please leave it and also you know just maintain that access so if it is in like a shed or something like that you know just crack a window open something like that which the birds can can um can still enter so yeah there's definitely some some golden golden tales there of uh, nesting birds <laughs> thank you that was quite a nice way to conclude so basically when it comes to nests um yeah if you if you see one just leave it be it, it is it is and should be protected by law um but ultimately we just you know i th i just think if there was an maybe this is just me but if there was a, a a nest in my garden um or on my roof i would find that such a privilege that mm. that that bird has chosen to mm. nest there and feels safe there um but yeah ultimately le you know nests are protected so please leave them where you where they are and yeah if you are going to do any work to your gardens obviously we appreciate that you know some people really want to do that work but it is like please wait for the uh the the chicks to have fledged mm -hmm. um and also to conclude if you ever go on holiday and leave your bedroom window open and come home to find a nest in your bed i'm afraid you're just gonna have to buddy up with that bird and uh make friends Thank you so much, Katie, for joining me on this one. And I'll have you back, no doubt, for another one. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this episode. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any birdie questions you'd like me to explore in this podcast, you can get in touch via my Instagram, at Holly.